Hey guys, welcome back. Ricky here. Okay, so I have just finished sharpening these two knives on the Naniwa Superstone 800 and the Sahiro CRX 1000. And this is going to be Battle Royale round number three. So here, uh, or is this round number four? I don't know. I can't remember exactly which one, but um, it doesn't really matter at this point. But okay, so we'll just go right into it. We'll go from a right to my left and we'll talk about the you know, uh, the Naniwa versus the Cirax here. And again, the performance, cutting performance of this stone is really exactly the same as it's always been. It took me six passes to get a burr on one side and four passes on the second side, okay? So again, not the f uh, fastest cutting stone. Uh, and one thing that's really kind of, you know, again, it's just kind of a sore subject on this stone is the constant load up that you're dealing with. I noticed that after about four passes on the first side, you're, uh, and as I showed you guys in the video where I uh, kind of ran the knife on one side versus the other, uh, or the region where the, there was fresh stone, you can really hear the difference between the side that was loaded up and the area that was uh, relatively fresh, okay? So this stone will load up very, very quickly, and I do mean quickly, okay? After the first pass, you notice that there's load up right away. And after the three passes, four passes, uh, it really starts to, at least in my opinion, starts to hinder the cutting performance, okay? Or slows down the cutting performance, I should say, instead of hinder it. But um, but a hand feel, still an amazing feeling stone. Uh, very, very comfortable to sharpen on. Very easy to use. Uh, tactile uh, feel, it's, again, it's a little numb or a little muted relative to this stone. But the way it feels, it's very comfortable, very easy to use. Uh, it's stone that you can feel at home uh, within your first sharpening, okay? So that's something that's very special about this stone. Now, even though it's not a soaking stone, it's a slash and go, it does hold water on the surface really well, okay? So uh, what that what that does and what that helps you with is as you're going along your pass, you will not have to stop midway in your pass in your sharpening and splash water on the stone, which is really handy. Uh, it's really convenient because you can really, you can focus on getting the, uh, getting the pass done, okay? Then after the pass, you can splash a little bit of water on it. It still, it still um, will be just a really good feeling stone after five or six passes, okay? So that's one thing that's really, really cool about this stone is even though it's not a soaking stone, it behaves, it doesn't behave like a soaking stone, but it holds water on the surface. Um, so, so it doesn't have the disadvantages of a typical splash and go stone, okay? Uh, really, there's really not a whole lot of bad things to say about the stone other than the, the slower cutting speed, okay? It's a little slower than what I would like for a sharpening stone and the loading up issue, okay? Again, the polish, and I'll show you guys uh, photos at the very end of the video. So if you guys want to see the video, just fast forward to the end. But you will see that this is a very, very, uh, it leaves a very nice polish. Again, I have always said that I've always maintained this is a 3000 grit equivalent stone, okay? And I will still stand by that uh, by that today. Comparing it to the uh, Sahiro, the Sahiro's polish is very very close. Okay, and it's it's very very close, but it doesn't quite have the scratch free look on the actual polishing uh, on the actual surface itself. It's very very close to a mirror polish, but with uh, with a satin finish to it. Okay, and if you guys. If you guys know sharpening stones, the difference between a 1,000 grit stone and 2,000 grit stone is really just the, the scratch pattern, how fine it is, okay? In terms of how sharp you can get the edge, it's really just down to technique, but the, the finish is what's uh, kind of what separates a lot of stones. But yeah, there's really not uh, not, neg not many negatives I have about the stone. Really great feedback, really great hand feel. Um, the, slow, the, the slower cutting speed is something that most people can deal with because, again, it's only an extra couple of passes. And an extra couple of passes is really just one or two minutes, okay? All right, so over here to the Cirax. Now, the Cirax has been my favorite stone uh, for the last four months of usage, okay? Uh, I've got the Naniwas only about a month ago when I when I started this whole series, this whole, you know, epic search for the best Japanese whetstone I can find. Uh, I've really gotten used to this stone, okay? So, so a couple things. Uh, hand, hand feel, tactile feedback. It is a very aggressive cutting stone, but not so aggressive that it, if you feel like you're hurting your, you're hurting your knife or you're taking off too much material, okay? It's very comfortable. 
Um, it's a good soaking stone. It took uh, ha half an hour, and after a half an hour today, uh, what I've noticed that I've noticed on this stone was even though I had the stone on a slight tilt on my bridge, and the and the base, I splashed water on it. Uh, water did not run off the stone and did not absorb into the stone, even in, in the top regions where at the highest point of the stone. Okay. Water just sat on the surface, which is a really good thing because now you know that this stone, after a half an hour of soaking, it's optimal, okay? It's actually cutting at, at its optimal uh, level. You don't have to worry about soaking the stone for an hour, uh, you know, or overnight or, you know, perma soaking the stone. You know that a half an hour, at least for me, this stone right here, after a half an hour, it is perfect to cut. That's not, that's not something, something that could be said for, let's say, a Bester 1200, okay? After... After 40 minutes of soaking in the Bester 1200, or on the Bester four, uh, 1200, it still was absorbing all the water that I would put on the surface, okay? So what would happen is after, uh, you know, 15, 20 strokes, when I'm halfway through my pass, I have to stop and splash water on the stone, because if I don't, the pitch of the stone gets really high, and you, you hear you hear the stone and the knife kind of uh, grinding on dry stone, okay? And you don't want that, at least on, on a soaking stone. Okay, so that's something that's really nice about the Cerax is it holds water. It hold, you know that after a half an hour, the stone is ready to sharpen. Okay, in terms of loading up, it loads up a lot less than the Naniwa, and it's probably the least loading, uh, the least loaded stone um, of what I have. Okay, it loads up the least amount for a soaking stone. Um, we'll see how it does against the King. But the Chosera 800 does not load up at all. Uh, this loads up very little. Normally it wouldn't load up this much, but because I ran the knife 21, 22 times on the brick today, it had to take off a lot more material today. Uh, and when I sharpened on the Chosera, I only ran it 15 times. Okay, so maybe if I had sharpened, if I um, if I ran the knife 22 times and sharpened on the Chosera, it would load up a little bit more. Okay, so we'll find out in the future how that actually holds up. Uh, or how that theory holds up. Uh, again, tactile feel, it's uh, very aggressive, but very smooth, very comfortable to uh, to use. Hand feel, you're very confident on this stone, okay? Similar to this stone here. If you guys noticed in the stropping session uh, of this knife, I was very comfortable, okay? Each, each, uh, each time I ran the knife, I was very confident of what I'm doing. I never feel like, you know, I'm gonna tilt my knife or I'm gonna lose lose control or the uh, blade's gonna run off, off the trails or something. Um, I really enjoy this stone. It's a really, really good stone for the price range. It's a mid $50, $50 stone. Um, really not a whole a lot of negatives about this stone, okay? Uh, I really can't think of any negatives about this stone. It's got great cutting speed. Again, it took me three passes to develop a burr on the first side and two passes on the second side. That is phenomenal for a stone that is $55, okay? Uh, and it gives you a really nice polishing effect. Uh, you know, again, I stand by the by my statement that this is like a 2,000 grit stone. Maybe 2,500, but let's just say 2,000 to be safe. Um, it's, the, it's one of the finer, or one of the finest 1,000 grit stones available. Now, I haven't sharpened on the 1,000 grit Naniwa Superstone yet, so I'm curious to see if the 1000 is finer than the, the 800 or around, along the same uh, same lines. But uh, for a 1000 rated stone, this is a 2000 equivalent stone in my opinion. Very good polish. It leaves, again, a very close to mirror polish with a satin finish to it. Okay, so I will show, I will show you guys photos uh, at the end of the video and you'll see for yourself. But now we're going to do a quick cut test and um, then we'll pick a winner. But keep in mind, I want to I want to just stress the point that a cut test is only to show you guys that the knives are sharp on their own. Okay, they're sharp without a polishing stone. Uh, they're sh they're sharp without a stropping compound. Okay, and also it'll show you it'll show me the imperfections uh, from tip to tip. Okay, so newspaper is really good because it's very very soft paper. It's very easy to cut. Um, but what happens is if you have any sort of um, imperfection in your uh, on the on the edge of the the blade on the cutting surface, it will show up on the newspaper. Okay, so that's really all it's for, and it's good entertainment. I know people love seeing knives being displayed on on YouTube of how well they cut, and I'm not going to shave my arms because I have no arm hair, as you guys can see, and um, 
yeah, so this is really just kind of to show you guys that the knife can cut uh, really well with just the sharpening stone, okay? So I've got a piece of newspaper right here that I've prepped. Uh, this one's relatively straight. Um, I've got some splotches on it, which I, I should have moved this paper further away from the sharpening area. I did not. It was right in front of the sharpening area. So it's got a few um, wet spots on it, but hopefully that won't affect anything. Ooh. Okay. All right. This is the sear racks now, the knife. Sharpen on the sear racks. Okay. Uh, I should, I really should go out and get a fresh newspaper. This is again December, uh, December 10th now, so old stuff. All right. Okay, here we go. I was catching a, a lot of weird spots, the, the, uh, all the crumple, the crumple areas. So as you guys can see, it's very, very sharp. And again, this is slightly damp paper here. But, uh, you know, this is a really nice cutting stone. Really nice cutting stone. And I'm not trying to make this stone so fine that it can split hair, okay? Uh, or I'm not, gonna I'm not trying to cut uh, sharpen on these stones and sharpen these knives to where I'm, I'm literally splitting hairs. I just want to make sure that it's sharp and um, and you know in the at home I actually spend a little bit more time sharpening these these knives. Uh, I might go back and forth a couple of times on the sharpening process, uh, but for these videos I only I stick with a formula that is easy to follow and it's easy for you guys to see. And so that's why these knives are probably not as sharp as they could be had I have I spend an, an extra five minutes uh, sharpening them. But they are pretty much, I mean, they're ready to go in, in, in any kitchen. So I'm slowing down the cut today because I found that if you just kind of uh, run the knife through, uh, pretty much it can cut through anything. But by running the knife through newspaper very slowly, you, you get a much better sense of how the edge is doing and just ran through a little wet spot there so yeah if your knife can run through the newspaper at a slower pace you know that you've got an extremely sharp knife okay and see so here's the the same knife oh, there's a wet spot there there we go all right there's a big wet spot right here but uh yeah uh, this is a bad area to cut there we go. So you see that when you cut it fast, you can cut through anything. But when you take your time and cut it and cut slow, you can hear any imperfections on the blade. Okay. So we'll try again with this guy. Yeah, and this, it kind of folded over itself there. But these knives are razor sharp, okay? And uh, so you guys don't have to worry if the knife is sharp uh, or if the stone will give you a good sharpening, uh, sharp, uh, sharpening session or experience. Uh, these knives are extremely sharp. But uh, we have to pick a winner now. And uh, so let me discuss a few things uh, so that you guys understand where I'm coming from. So for me, I'm looking for the stone that is is at least on the sharpening side, okay, that is relatively fast. Uh, speed is something that I would consider, um, but things like tactile feel and feedback are the two most important things, okay? Now, below those three items, I'm looking at things like, um, you know, uh, how, how consistent the stone is and how much does it load up, you know? D do I find it annoying to sharpen on? Do I find it pleasurable to sharpen on? And these stones, they are so far uh, some of my favorite stones. They're this is a little slower, but they're very pleasurable to sharpen on. They're very easy to use. They're very pleasurable to work on. Uh, and so picking a winner is actually not the easiest thing with these two stones. But I will pick a winner. And my winner is going to be the Cerax, okay? And here's why. Even though this feels, uh, it has got a more... I guess if I had to pick a word for this, for the Naniwa Superstone, I would say it's a luxurious feeling stone, okay? Because it's so smooth, it's so fine, uh, you know, it's such a refined stone that it is, 
it's just a pleasure to work on. You know, it's a, it's a pleasure to sharpen on. So it's a very luxurious feeling stone. This stone here is like a sports car. It's very aggressive, um, very well put together, very well engineered. You know, it doesn't have that comfort, uh, that that plush feel of the super stone. But I enjoy sharpening on the stone a lot more. And the two things that really stand out to me is it doesn't load up as much. Okay, I hate to look at the stone after three to four passes and feel like I've got to run a Nagara stone on it and, and to clean the surface off. That really, that takes the pleasure away from the stone a little bit for me, okay? That's not for everyone. That's not true for everyone. But I will say for myself. And on, and even though this stone here uh, is a, you know, a very, it's a fine stone, but also it's a very fast cutting stone, okay? So for me, even though speed is at the bottom of the three most important things, the three criteria that we're looking at, you know, tactile feel, hand feedback, or tactile feedback, hand feel, and speed, though it's at the end, it's so much faster, it literally is twice as fast than the Superstone that it was enough for, for me to tip, you know, to kind of tip the, the, uh, the favor uh, into the Surex, okay? So there you have it. I mean, again, I really can't find anything bad to say about this stone. I really can't. It's, it's fast cutting, great tactile feedback, great hand feel. It doesn't load up. It stays flat. Uh, it's a soaking stone, which I have a bias towards soaking stones, I will admit. But uh, yeah, I mean, I really cannot find any negatives about this stone. It's a really nice stone, okay? And uh, it still is amongst my favorite stone right now. I still have not used the King uh, Deluxe very often, or enough to really get a good sense of, the, of that stone. And uh, again, this is going against some very stiff competition next. It's going against the Torsera 800. Okay. And uh, we'll put this guy over here. So this guy here is an amazing stone. Okay, we're not going to go too deep into this stone today because I've got another video for it. But... You know, these three stones are the last remaining of the video right now, for this series at least, okay? And I'm really curious to see what's going to happen. I know that the King is a great cutting stone. I've used it a couple of times since I've had it. I know that this is a really, really good cutting stone. And it's it's just very aggressive. It's got a very um, lively feel to it. And this does too. So, yeah. Uh, you know, so, so this is the... This is the I guess this is the semifinals now. One more round and we, two more rounds, and we're gonna find out which is gonna be the, which is gonna be crowned the king of whetstones, okay? So, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you guys have liked these videos. Um, hopefully I'm doing, you know, something that is useful for you. And uh, thank you for watching so far. Please uh, give a comment if you guys have any other suggestions um, towards this series. And uh, please subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already. It's uh, it's it's free. It's free. From, I don't get paid for it, but uh, it'll just motivate me to do some more of these videos, of these types of videos. And I'm just having a lot of fun right now, and I hope you guys are as well. Uh, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.